What's up, YouTube? Well, cars and trucks. Actually, we found a lot. <laughs> I had like kind of a lull, and then past week or so, there's been a lot of things hitting. So let's take a look. I had a little bit of a mail call as well. We'll share. Got some good ones. You probably you can look below in the description. Every vehicle we look at, uh, you know what brand, and you know if I have any information about how many they produced. I'll put all that below so you can search for your own vehicle if you want to get something in your collection. But yeah, we had some good successes for the past few weeks. I think the last one we did was a few weeks ago, so here we are again. And uh, lots of cool stuff. Let's start out with some artifact stuff I found at the old antique swap shop uh, type of place. Let's take a look. Vintage. Wow, going on vintage now. Got a couple. We got good old racing champions, which is the old school OG kind of like high end 164th player, you know, back in the day. And some of these racing champion are old Ertl castings. And I know a lot of you have commented on that and said, uh, you know, they used to see them there when they were Ertl cars and stuff like that. But let's take a look. So the first one. It's something I don't have an example of this car in the collection, so I actually saw it. It was actually a good price, so we got it. This is a Studebaker Commander 51 car. Really, really interesting design work on this vehicle. It's definitely a, a car if you can't place the name. Once you see it real quick, you'll know what I'm talking about. And also, we got a good old first release 64 Barracuda so this is out of the auto world way back in hmm, 15 2014 range still in there doing the boxes so this was awesome first example so first run I think the other color was a lighter color but this was the first casting release so I have a first gen of these and kind of an underused casting just because it's a niche vehicle really that auto world did but there really wasn't the uh, first gen barracuda out there not to i don't think there's anyone but auto world I, I mean really the only other time these probably were done were like for promo cars back in the day i don't even think there's a model kit of first gen barracuda but i could be wrong so here you go you can see and when we look at the early days of Auto World 164th, just like Greenlight early days, the quality is very, very high. The cars usually had a very low rate of any blemishes or things like that. And it just happens, you know, there's a lot of changes, I'm sure, and a lot more demand, a lot more product that they're producing, and tooling gets a little aged and so on and so forth but look at the, I mean and this is under magnification and it's good that I found the pewter color which they're calling let's see if they even I don't even think they show the color yeah this is <laughs> this is how early these boxes were so this is before they told you how many were in the series then they went to having it you know I'm looking at the package while we're looking at the casting on screen but we had the box so we had the little match box that they give you and then this said new tool and it's vintage muscle and all that, but they don't have production number. And then they had production numbers and then they got rid of them again. And they also got rid of the box. So this is kind of an interesting thing. That's why I like saving the boxes with Auto World. Auto World is almost uh, a series of cars that, that you can kind of be a completist with. You know, kind of flirt with that, even though there's a lot of Miho and other die cast wholesalers that you know will order a few runs of a special vehicle this is pretty cool let's take a look at the motor it's just a really crisp casting there's no issues with it the tires are awesome so small block poly probably i think they had the uh two eight two something two sixty something or something like that that small v8 um probably offered a six you know, it's off of Valiant. Really what they did was they had the Valiant car and Mustang. I think this beat the Mustang to the market. 
um, but I can't remember. But it was definitely around the time of all the pony card early, early stuff. So we have a youthful demographic that can purchase these vehicles, and they were able to take the economy cars and you know put a sporting image to them. So really, they just cut the the top of the car off and and did this and and kind of gave it some treatment. But really, a valiant vehicle. Really cool. And then the Studebaker. We're not running, we're overlooking this car, too. Another design classic. I didn't buff up or, or, you know, do a little research on this. I should have. But, you know, again, Studebaker was always an underdog, and they did. They try to do a lot with a little, just like its success of companies like AMC and everything out that, that came afterwards. But... This car is pretty cool. So this is a <laughs> 51 car. So this must have been, you know, this is right after the war. And cars were starting to get style backed into them. They weren't so so plain. They were trying to really do a lot. And this is a Racing Champions casting. So, But it's got touches with the individual hood ornaments and mirrors and all that. It's all, so there's your flathead. I think that's a six-cylinder. <laughs> I don't think they had the 8 in this, but yeah, really cool. And of course you had that bullet nose grill. Kind of like the the fighters, you know, the propeller planes. And they have that little spinner on the front. A little exaggerated with the grill. There we go there. And then of course that back window. Just a cool casting. I know probably a lot of people... Maybe are new to this, or you know they don't have access to the full breadth of the American, um, pe you know, castings back on the day. You know, this might be something to go after. It's really cool, and the white walls again. This is like something back from seventeen, so still kind of, still kind of giving the cars a pretty good quality control. Although Johnny Lightning and stuff's been pretty good. Auto World's still been pretty consistent. I mean, you know, if there was a change, it's slight. And they got that rose color. So, really cool. Let's not spend too much time. <laughs> we only talk about two cards. But uh, we'll see how far we can get. You know, if we need to break it up, we will. So, these look great with the hot rods. You know, these cards have a lot of style to them, for sure. I really like the Barracudas uh, 67, 8, and 9. That that Barracuda is a very cool car. A little bit smaller than the dedicated E-body car, you know, the, the 70 to 74. But that's a great car, but I think the other one's kind of cool too. It's a little smaller, a little chiller. It's got that really big back glass. So that's my personal opinion. You know, you don't have to take that to the bank if you don't want to. All right, we're going to look at another Auto World base casting. Now, this is, well, this was on sale. That's really the only reason I got it. I mean, these are cool because they're Target exclusives. Everybody's kind of really goes after them or they don't. They seem to be that they'll release, like, two different cars at a time. So, like, two of the two packs. They'll have, like, one, and then they'll have another with a couple of cars, and they just... A ton of them, and they'll sit there. I mean, it's a decent deal. So this was marked down to like eight bucks for the two cars. So I went ahead and got it. Um, they redo the castings over and over, kind of. Well, it seems like to me. I mean, they might, you know, put a casting in here, a newer one, to kind of give it a little kickstart. But this might be a trial. You know, they might be only doing a fiscal year with it, and maybe say, we'll see. You know, if we're gonna have these cars hang around for a long time. Or we got to discount them like that, 20 to 40 percent. You know, who knows? But this is a cool pairing, so I, I didn't mind it. You know, I'm not about the, you know, I don't care too much about the plastic chassis. It just, you know, if they're going to do that, let's let's give this car a price of one of those majorette cars, which have a plastic chassis but have good detail. And those cars are like 350 to $4, something like that. So I think these should be in, sold in singles. I think they should be sold in singles, and I think they should, you know, probably put out, like, a, a true six or seven, you know, eight car, whatever, at a time. You know, with the car like this, with the cheaper materials, 
you know, Matchbox comes in 24, you know, Hot Wheels is 72, but maybe we can do like, a, I don't know, a 10 or a 15, 16, and just put these cars out and let us buy them that way. I think, you know, if we price them right, I think these would be a little bit better, um, more attractive. You know, if I wanted the third gen, yeah. <laughs> I wanted the third gen car. I'll get that. You know, I don't need that. But these are a good pairing. Two 80s icons. Now, this is the SVO Mustang. So, it had two, three turbo. And this is calling this car out as a... Uh, is it 86? Yeah, so last year for SVO. You can see they flush mounted the headlights on the car. And I think the fuel injection system and all that was pretty well sorted by this time. So, good vehicle. Of course, they got to use the generic plastic wheels. But these are great candidates for wheel swaps. They're great cars. Both castings are very highly accurate. I think this is one of my favorite third gen Camaro castings. I think I like it better than the M2. And certainly everything that came before it, I mean, is all kind of silly. Now, the taillights are a little something going on. They're, or they're all right. That's why, like, sometimes the M2 can be shines through because sometimes the individual details on it add up pretty well but for the way the car is shaped and everything perfect i mean pretty good and i like this car because they did the light colored interior and this one is a, a 91 so by 93 they switched to the fourth gen so really last year and this is kind of what last way it looked they kind of rounded out the ground effects on the car did the tail light treatment i think that steering wheel was a different steering wheel, things like that. They updated the car a little bit. The car that looked the best as a as a third gen really was the Firebird, the 91-92 Firebird. That's a very, very good looking car in my opinion. I think that would be a nice car to have. Uh, but both would have the Tune Port uh, 305. I don't think they did 350s still. They might have had a 350 in the later cars. Yeah, that was true actually. And then uh, there was a 350 Formula Pontiac too they could get. But a lot, most of the cars are 305s and six cylinders. Um, and there you go. All right, so we'll continue. People know about this casting. A lot of people like these cars. They're a little cheaper. I almost would like to see the actual true auto wheel cars as a two-pack special. And, and really, I think these would be better with a, a single pack and then just a little bit more variety. All right, let's go from there. We're looking at some vehicles here. Well, we'll get through these because, I, again, I bring up Majorette. I'm going to show them. You know, a lot of people do the Hot Wheels in the, in the Matchbox Premium. I don't think I need to go over that. But these I think we should look at. I, I already put the boxes away, but this one came on my radar. Uh, well, these two, but let's look at all three. That way we can see all of them. So this one showed up on Instagram. And Walmart is just starting to really... They're starting to multiply the pegs. I think they're now they dedicate two, three to four pegs uh, of just Majorette and the Jada Majorette partnership car, cars, the pink cars, pink slip or whatever they call it. Um, but these are awesome. They're really cool. I was a big fan of Majorette growing up. It was a wonderful. It was probably one of my favorite uh, cars. I probably was Majorette Matchbox were tied. You know, Hot Wheels is kind of in the background. Uh, just because of the way they rolled and the way the black wall cars were. They were, uh, you know, you had to get a mint one out of the car. You know, they really would get bent axles quick and everything else like that. So, really like the other two. Majorette was awesome. The suspension, I think, really won the day most of the time for me. But they were hard to find. They weren't as around like they are today. It's nice that Walmart carries them, but it was always special when you found a store that had a Majorette selection. Uh, always like looking through those. So we have a BRZ Toyota A86 car, which is the first gen body. And then we have a really cool car, the ZR1, uh, <laughs> a C4 uh, Corvette, which is kind of cool. And actually, I got the cards here. I just don't have the boxes. I put the boxes away. This one, I think it's like a 92 or something like that. Or. Does it even say? No, it just doesn't say. But in that range, and I think this was 
the the ZR1 with the LT4 heads, which everybody loves. So we had the 32 valve, I think it was overhead cam style engine. I think that's what it was. You know, I know there's a lot of things crammed in the, in the brain, so hopefully I'm thinking about that right. But anyway, six speed transmissions, LT4. They did an awesome job. They they display the car like this in the package. Now I've seen pictures of this car where the hood lays flat. Mine doesn't lay flat. I didn't uh, take this a uh, car apart yet, but I probably will. And they had the C4 Corvette, you know, back in the day with the huge balloon tires. And I have a few of those cars in my collection, um, in my cases. And uh, I just it was a cool car, and I always loved it. It had great suspension travel. Now this one. With the universal wheels looks good. It's a rubber tire, plastic base car. But the windshield and the shape of the C4 is excellent. It's a little bit bigger than 164 scale, but that's okay. Of course, we have that later C4 interior. So we had that semi-airbag wheel kind of thing, big thing. And then the dashboard was improved and the seats were improved from the earlier 80s ones. And these cars, I believe, all the LT4, or the, all the ZR1s, they always were uh, coupe, uh, Targa cars. I don't think they made convertible ZR1, I'm pretty sure. And they did that taillights correctly, so we had the square, squared up taillights, not the circular ones. That's the other way you could tell Corvette, I think... Uh, uh, 91-92-3 went to that kind of tail light and then the zero one had it too so and they had the corvette and i mean it's just a cool car it's really cool so i'm happy to have this i'll probably get one packaged because this really is one of my favorites hopefully they do more colors and uh it's great to see the c4 back in action um majorette was first in the recent times to kind of redo that car I know that probably, you know, Hot Wheels has done it, but they have had their old casting. I don't think they've recast that car yet, you know, as a premium. And then the other really cool one, which is always a perennial favorite throughout the decades of people liking die cast. They always liked the 917 car. And this one is awesome. You know, they have always put this recently for the majorette cars that you can get in the States. It was always in the five pack. And I think I have another one of these. But uh, I can't remember. But I saw this. This was sweet. And the Hot Wheels, the 100% one, is huge money. I mean, hundreds of dollars, the one that Hot Wheels does back in the day. And then also their 930 Porsche 911. Uh, that's another one that goes for big money. But all the rest of the 100% Hot Wheels cars, not, not that much money. So... If you see them, pick them up. They're going to be cool. They're going to be very more collectible. I think they're 20, 25 years old now, but I think their their time has come. There's so many people that bought those cars that are pretty much everyone I find, they still are all in the package. So I'm, I'm probably the only one that opens them up, but I don't know. I digress. This is a great casting. Flat 12-cylinder engine on this car, and I think it was turboed. So it's just a monster legendary car and we can talk go on and on about that but anyway i'll back it up we'll put this in majorette row for now and these cars they roll just as good as they have ever have probably the best rolling cars now that you can buy for the majorette so let's look at some uh well we'll show you this one last car so i showed this on instagram i found this car it's just sitting there on a trip in a grocery store so again these older sets will pop up i think they i don't know the the cases are there or they're behind some other cases and they were like well we got to sell all these ones first and then we'll go back to the one that came you know last year but it never fails you know um especially the meyer you know unfortunately i'll break broadcast that to you meyer folks that uh Go there and looking for die cast or you know go there to get milk and stuff you know they put out these cases i mean these cases are usually 12 to 6 months old all the time i would say every two quarters of the year you'll find it uh you know sometimes i'm late to the party 
uh, you know, I'll see the remnants of a case that I needed. But I've been pretty good on finding the auto worlds I want when they come out originally. But it's, again, I missed some cars. There's a couple out there that I don't have. This was one of them. <laughs> this is this black Lincoln. And uh, it's finally here. So I only found one. Uh, you know, maybe we'll see some other Meyer putting out these. Because I did find Cadillac... Uh, Coupe de Ville's from years ago put out a couple years ago from them and, and that was an odd thing but yeah like three year old cases were put out so that was funny but yeah it happened to me it wasn't a local one to me but I happened to have been in the area so I stopped and, and lo and behold there she was so the black one is finally in the collection we have it we've looked at the Lincolns before this is a 77 so this one came out with the blue one and then they had the 78s and then the 79. So now I have all six, I would say. Yeah, I think that. And there's no special editions of the Lincoln yet. Oddly enough, they haven't done a you know low rider special for Miho or anything like that. So really the stock ones that came uh, main release from our world, that's all there is. So we'll see. You know, that car would be a great car for a uh, custom. Or a, or a limited run, you know, different color, low rider, whatever. I think uh, they deserve to, to be looked at. Maybe we'll see them come up in the future. All right. Let's look at a little green light. We like green light. So I was able to be lucky enough to attend the green light open house, in a, you know, under their new ownership and management. Very, very nice folks all the time. Local Indianapolis company, so it's always nice to see. Now, unfortunately, you know, they have that online store, but the local store has been closed for a long time, probably most of the year. But it was great to be able to go into the store once in a while. Had to limit yourself because you didn't want to keep buying stuff. But, you know, you can go in there and get the cars um, that were picked over or whatever. They haven't hit the stores yet. They'd be out. So... Basically, if you saw a car show up on the online retailers, then you'd probably be able to go to the store and find it there as well and basically save yourself the shipping and all that. But anyway, they got rid of that. Small offices, they downsized. They don't have warehouse space. So they had it at an event, and I found some vehicles. They had some cars there that, you know, were had been online for about a year, but, you know, I just never picked them up. So we found some good stuff. A couple of these cars that we look at are what I found there. Uh, this is the one that I wanted. You know, since I saw it was released, and it's an '85 Dodge Ram D100, but it's California Highway Patrol. So for my CHP collection, this will be part of it, and this goes really good with my. Uh, basically, I turn it into a C20 or a K20, and uh, same same topper, but I, I uh, lifted it a little bit and, and gave it a better tire. So most of the time the trucks were four wheel drive because they would use them, you know, there's a lot of <laughs> uh, rural and desolate areas in California and, you know, the trucks are a big part of the law enforcement. So awesome. You know, they had probably two wheel drive like this too. So we'll, maybe we'll leave the Dodge like this because they really have excellent, they did a great job. You know, Greenlight's starting to kind of go in a good direction with uh, the quality and they're paying attention to the finer details because they they've always had it in them to do good products. Now this one still suffers from the incorrect wheelbase on the bed, but all the, the all black and the big bumper and the cap kind of kind of eliminates a lot of that look. So the only thing I didn't do yet is just fill in the black that's missing on some of the wheels. The extra x exterior part of the rim there has a little bit of chrome showing through doesn't look that bad on the camera so but they did a great job on the dodge uh hubcaps that's basically how they look so that looks good and green lights uh universal tire works well with the rim as well and the color of the tan interior looks very good so very good stuff and I haven't glued this on yet. Did not come with the roof rack. It has the pins for it, but it didn't do the roof rack like this one did. I think this one turned out pretty nice. Anyway, this is pops off, so kind of looks plain like that. No light bar on this. I don't. A lot of these times they wouldn't have light bars. Someday they have the drop down light, and they might have a siren in the grill. 
and they definitely would have the spotlight there. But basically, they kind of looked like this. You know, they weren't pulling people over a lot of times. You know, they maybe would move equipment around or, you know, they patrol the trails and stuff. But uh, I don't know. Maybe a CHP officer could speak up, see how many pursuits they did with these things. <laughs> uh, but what a cool truck. So 85 Dodge, you know, V8 truck probably, although they had inline sixes. Carbureted. They carved this truck all the way, all the way to I think ninety or eighty nine, ninety ninety one is when they switched to fuel injection. I know certainly until they switched this body style, the last truck was in ninety three. Certainly by ninety two ninety three it was definitely fuel injected, uh, and then they you know the new the ninety four Dodge Ram, the crazy looking one, that really made it. All the trucks kind of kind of hot that came after this but uh what a beauty all right now another green light we'll look at uh this one woodward avenue bronco it's kind of another hobby exclusive set uh this was sold at the dream woodward dream cruise i think i'm pretty sure so this is like one of the event cars and this was also sold online. But anyway, I think it was a couple of them. This was one of them. Great stock looking Bronco. Now this is one of the older castings, green light, but they put the smaller tire on. So it looks very good. Now I haven't done the spacing on it. Now the, the tires would have been set a little bit, but not that much. So we will get that corrected. But it's in this nice little French blue. And it's got the lighter colored interior and the hard top. So just a good looking truck beautiful work on the t on the uh bumpers and you got your little v8 in there with the correct air cleaner so it's just a great casting it looks good they kind of reimagined it they took off the chunky tires and they put a stock uh, hub cap and all that so all this needs is just a little bit of different wheel spacing on it and it's going to look awesome maybe a license plate so good roller too all right, Ford Bronco, one of the early SUVs, although the International Scout was definitely before that. So give International its its props. Next car, just another uh, Nissan Patrol to add to collection. Now, this is just out of one of the Tokyo series, I think. Yeah, 73 Patrol 60, and this is out of Tokyo Torque Series 9. These are just like on repeat, you know, unfortunately, like this one's a great color scheme, so I went ahead and got it, but uh, I really need a few of these. I want to use these wheel and tire combinations for M2 dots, and I saw a couple people wheel swap that vehicle, lift it with this, and this is a perfect scale rim and tire for those early four-wheel drive mini trucks, so definitely can't wait to do one. I'm just trying to pick a dots, and then I want to do it too. And then, of course, you know, you're spending the money on these to, to take them apart, basically. So, <laughs> it's not something I like to do all the time. I wish I could have a bunch of wheels from, you know. I don't know if uh, Greenlight has released these wheels yet in their wheel and tire pack. But if they do, I'll probably buy a few. Because these will actually look awesome on the small trucks. And, you know, even those Ford Rangers and things that... Giant Lightning, you know, all that stuff is, is fair game. You know, it might change the tire, those pizza cutters, but other than that. So, we've looked at this before. I think these are six-cylinders like the Land Cruiser, pretty sure, and diesels and things like that. They didn't paint anything in there, so that steering wheel probably needs to be black, and so does the shifter, but the, the seats look good. And um, just a cool truck. I like the white, with, or it's like cream with uh, the green, the field green. So there we go with that. Good old Nissan truck. Two solid axle four-wheel drive. We always like that. Okay. What are we looking at next? Oh, yeah, this is a good one. This is another one that was cheap at the show or at the convention or whatever the hell you want to call it. So 62 Holiday House. I've always wanted this one. But this was the one I wanted with the green. I love the green. It looks amazing. And a great mid-century modern type of trailer. 
the opening door, but it's nothing in there, I don't think. So this is Hitch Tome Series 12. I don't even know why they keep this up. I feel like these trailers would be better when they use them in the uh, Hitch and Toe series. I don't know if there needs to be a dedicated series of trailers. So this is on the 12 series. I mean, yeah, they've been tooling up trailers. It's awesome. They're better than any of the other trailers. A couple of Audible trailers are pretty good. But, you know, Greenlight does pretty good trailers. And uh, I just don't, I mean, I don't know. I mean, they're doing this over and over again. How many people are going to buy it? Over, I don't, I don't see myself, you know, putting these up like my square body pickups. Like I'm not gonna, you know, have every single. I don't know. So maybe it's just you have variety. Maybe everybody wants to put a hitch on every car they have, and then have all the trailers. I have no idea. For me personally, you know, they could probably slow it down a little bit. Maybe <clears throat> release more motorhomes. I think. Maybe if we had the trucks with the the motorhomes on them and these and the the big RVs and put that in a in a in a set or a series, let's do that. I think that would be a little bit better and maybe slow it down. Maybe not release so many of them. Uh, and and that's my two cents on the, on that. But on this one, I like the small Bambi airstreams, like the big airstreams. Again, I like them, but I only probably want two or three of them at the most. And then I think maybe another one of these, maybe if they do a pink one, I think that would look really cool. But this looks good on some vintage cars I have, so this is great. And also looks good, you know, if I have a car show and I have my trailer there, I think that's the one. So Holiday House, not though too much about them. I think they're really cool, though. So anybody want to comment on the Holiday House, go for it. Okay. Next green light. Let's look at this. This is their blank series. These are going super cheap. I didn't realize that. I could have bought more of them. But I didn't have the new body charger in the collection. And this was a nice plain one. Let's see if I can lighten this up a little bit. There we go. So it's got the, I mean, the rims are a little big, but, you know, they are big on the car, even though they're steelies. They're actually like 17, 18s or something like that. So bigger steely on these cars. This one has the wheels from the all-wheel drive. All-wheel drive chargers are pretty easily identifiable. Their steelies or their wheel covers are pushed out. They're not, they're not dished. The two-wheel drive chargers always have the dished steelies. Uh, and that's only because the hub system on the all-wheel drive, really on the front, pushes that uh, steering knuckle out a little bit. They don't get the same geometry as they do on the two-wheel drive spindles and all that. So you can have more of a dished offset on, on the two-wheel drive chargers, but not on the all-wheel drive. They have a different axle setup, and, and that's why there's a difference there. Okay. But we have the black grill. Of course, we need to paint the top of the bumper black so it's still showing white. But the headlights are good. And I like the kind of low pros on it. It looks okay. It also needs an adjustment with the back spacing. So it really probably should be out even more than that. Yeah, definitely more than that. And then I think the car would be good. We got to paint the inside of the door so You can see how it doesn't look right. So, you know, the car really, unfortunately, do this... Drill the car out, take it apart, and paint all that. Because it really, you know, you see the white, how we're looking at the door here. And then we have the white. So that's not, that just takes away from a good casting. Casting's actually really good. Nice casting. Good, good scale and all that. But you have to get that black in there. It doesn't look right at all. I think there's an engine in there. We'll try to look. Let's see. Let's see. You know, a lot, a lot of these cars nowadays are um, the sixes, but this one's a Hemi. So, very, very good. Good horsepower out of these Hemi. I mean, at this point, the Hemi is a very tried and true engine for Chrysler. There's the box. These are available online all the time and really wide. We've looked at the Caprice I got in the... The Dodge Diplomat, that car too is a great car. Again, a blank series. They make the Ford Explorers, the two, uh, the the Ford Explorer the Tahoe. Uh, they had the the Taurus, but that's not available anymore. I don't think. 
and then the, the Charger, the Durango, and the Caprice, and the LTD. You got the Ford LTD Crown Victorias. You got all the Crown Vicks, actually. Actually, quite a bit. A lot of police cars they do. So, very good. Really, the only one that does police car. Um, the Auto World really doesn't do it. And none of the other ones really do accurate police cars. So, um, that's another reason I'm always in Green Lights Camp. All right, so... Put that cop car over there. Love cop cars. Now, another cool one we'll look at is this. This is a new casting. And actually, this came out, I saw a Target. 46 Ford. Tim the Tool Man. This is a Hollywood Series 40 on the nose. So Hollywood, they're very heavy duty with Hollywood. Fantastic casting. Excellent, excellent work. So this is their new school stuff. Kind of more uh, not into the separate headlight and grill. This is all cast, which I think their tampoing was always very good. So they're playing some of to their strengths. They're casting more of the car like Auto World does. I think the, the quality of the car is going to be a lot better. You know, when they try to put separate headlights in the car and all this, you know, the, the car suffers. It doesn't look right. Th you know, things happen. You know, now most of the work is being done with the paint, all the detail, and the casting. And, you know, really the only parts we got the bumpers. And that's, and I don't even think the taillights. Yeah, you know, the taillights are painted too. So it's really just the bumpers. Now look how clean it is. So great job, great job. I did flip this one around. These are gonna, <laughs> these are going black. So we're gonna do black steel, these chrome caps, black walls, and then this car is gonna look right. But right now we'll just show you how it comes. They also had the two grease, um, the movie grease cars. So the grease lightning car and the other car, the black car. Those were both like forty six cars, uh, or forty. Five, I don't. Remember. I think it's basically this car, but it was it's set up higher. But really cool car. Super good. You know, we were looking at the last time cars were like this, were those Hot Wheels cars. You know, we were looking at, like, let's say this uh, Ford. So it's been, you know, 20 years since we've had cars like this, you know. So now, you know, green light, look at that. So... This has the convertible top, but it's part of the windshield. So this is not something that you can take off and have a convertible, you know, unless you wanted to use your blade and cut this out. So, but the other side to that is this won't fall off and then it, it looks good. I mean, they paint it very good and you can see the interior. It's just good. I mean, it's very good. They paint the steering wheel horn button and all that and it's just a great car and it rolls good so they're using their tire design but it's the low profile and they drilled the axle holes up but you can see it also would serve for a stock ride height too all i got to do is just change how they're drilling it out so i'm happy with this one it's really cool hopefully it has some big ford engine in it or whatever all right keep going on we'll just leave this over here this is a vehicle i don't think made it to no it did <laughs> we'll go to the next one pretty sure we looked at that one already m2 so the model kit series now we've seen these blazers and we've seen the obs gm trucks so I'm just going to show you, I, these are cool because they got pretty stock looking paint jobs. This one, I, I put the M2 uh, sport truck rims that also were used on the 454 SS. What I did was I black washed where, um, you know, you don't want to see the chrome, which is basically the openings in the wheels. So I got that black washed and I think it brings out the character of the wheel. I didn't reference another picture yet to see if i want to darken the center caps i can't remember if they were chrome or if they were polished or whatever so or if they were black so i'll leave those alone for now but i think the the rim looks good 
I kept the M2 tire on it and we went ahead and gave the spacers and left the interior red. It, it's a good looking truck. It had an issue with the paint from the factory. You can see the silver under there. I just left it alone. It's kind of odd. It's kind of like an error car. And it was facing this way. But this was the only one there, so I had to get it. Uh, these are very popular um, with the M2 folks. So I'm glad I had it. I actually bike these trucks to open them and put them in the collection and build them and stuff. I don't really store them. I mean, if it's a hard to find one, I might get a second. But they're 10 bucks now, so... You know, they do come with the lift and all that. But we'll just look at the truck. Um, this is like release, whatever. Let's see. It doesn't even say. But it's item 37000. And it's got the cool, like, 80s GMC, like that black and silver that they used to do. So it's very nostalgic. Now I did take this truck's emblems and cut them out and I put them on the shop. I think they look really cool. Hopefully, and I should look through some of the packaging, I probably can find some more stuff to do like that. And this one came in the same set. Um, so we, look, we looked at that before. I don't need to. We don't need to go into too much too much about this but anyway this one i chose the rallies it also has the wagon wheels and we put it together tires do not come on the rims and they're they're bare to put those tires on you really got to warm them up in your hands and kind of stretch them over they got a very deep groove for the rim and uh it's it's you got to be careful and definitely got to mount those tires before you even put them, think about putting them on the axle because it'll break the axle this one came with the stock engine. It's hard to get this open. It doesn't really open very well. Some of them open easily and some of them don't. But yeah, stock like 350 or whatever you want to say it is. The orange block. Left the roll bar on it. Kind of looks good with the blue. And it's a 74, so really very early in Blazer life. Still had the, the top that came completely off. So that was cool. Makes these the most valuable, pretty much, just because it goes for full convertible. All right, we'll make some little space because we're getting close. All right, so really, I saw these come out and I was like, wow, incredible. So the early part of the Camel Trophy years where they were using Range Rover and then they switched to Land Rover again, Defender type of trucks or in the um, Discoveries, but. This one is sweet. I have a 124 scale of this as well in this color. So the shiny and the matte. And I didn't notice what this was, but this is the American team's car. But I got the international release. So cool that they chose to do the American team first and not the other um, countries. Because there are multiple countries that participated but this is the American one, and it's got the, the uh, left-hand drive. Awesome. Just incredible detail for $12 to $15 car. Just an, just an awesome vehicle. Mini GT is probably one of my favorites. I think that it's close to Auto World. Of course, they're a little bit more pricey. That makes it hard to get all of them. And they're kind of narrow right now. They're broadening very, very quickly. But they've been historically super car, late model car stuff. So they're starting to do the vintage. So we got the old 911 coming out, which I want to buy. First gen or second gen 911s that they're doing. Uh, they're going to do the, the, the RS or the Carrera. The RS or whatever it is. The early Carrera um, 911 as well. That's going to be a good car. They got that Lincoln that they put out that I haven't bought yet. So we're, we're seeing some good stuff. The vintage stuff is going to be good. You know, if they do vintage sports car, if they do some of the early Jaguars and early Ferraris, they're probably going to really be take off very heavily. So, But we're in a good place. So we're doing, you know, early. We have a an 82 car. 
And in 71, so, you know, they do, this is basically when the car came out, it looked like this, it has the wing mirrors, and then this is towards the later years, uh, when it, I mean, it was sold as a two-door for a while, they had the four-door too, but this is 1982, and this is really sweet, and so you can see the window treatment, for instance, there, versus this one where it's painted. And then some of the tail light looks a little bit different. I mean, this one has the covers on it, but you could see that it, it kind of is a little bit bigger back there than it is there. Let's see if this will this will stay focused. So flat, kind of goldenrod, tremendously. The wheels are perfect. Excellent wheels. They really didn't lift these trucks, you know. They kind of gave the vehicle your your normal off-roading equipment, but it was a competition, but it was also to showcase how good these were, these vehicles were. And they they weren't modified too much. I don't really think they had a lift. If they did, it was just nothing, rarely. They wanted to showcase, you know, a vehicle from the factory pretty much can handle it, and they did. These generation Range Rovers were basically, um, or Range Rovers were ba Land Rovers, you know, with a nice body. I mean, they had the solid axle, they had the real four wheel drive system, and they had that nice little V8 in them. So, unless they were using the diesels, I don't know. But most of them had the old Rover V8s, which were the Buick. So, nice interior. And then we're going to go to the early one. And we can see, you can actually see the front end on it. Simple bumper. And then we have the this style. I don't think they change, yeah, they don't change the steering wheel or anything. Year to year. And then we have the Land Rover badge back there. Just awesome. Both have hitches, so they probably will go well with the little trailers that they do. This would be nice towing like a vintage British car. So this is cool. This also looked good with an early Jag. So, you know, we have our gravel. <laughs> we just need a Jag. These are awesome. These are really, really cool. I love these. The, the plaque on this. Now, they're making that one with the um, indigenous people. Um, and they'll have it all dirtied up, and, and those are going to be special because the people at Mini GT said they're kind of different each one because they're they're hand doing the airbrushing of the dirt and everything, so they're kind of all slightly different, and uh, so that's going to be a special set. I think we should set aside some funds to buy that. It comes with the people in the car, I think, and a little thing, so very excited. And the last one we're going to look at, these are sweet. I mean, look how cool those are. The last car we're going to look at is this. So this will be part of the Lamborghini collection. The Cyan, as I like to say. I don't know if I'm saying that completely correct. Um, casting 529. FKP 37. Lamborghini's first hybrid. So instead of using batteries, this uses like special high-capacity capacitors to store the electricity to give it a real jolt of electricity because it has like a 30 40 horsepower electric engine with the 10 cylinder i'm pretty sure it's a v10 but the car total makes just over 800 horsepower does 0 to 60 under three seconds has a theoretical top speed of 221 mile an hour all-wheel drive vehicle a tremendous car really and like most of the supercar manufacturers, the future is going to be probably more electric than it is gasoline. So this is really one of the last hurrahs and quite a vehicle. Let's take a look. Just superb. People have looked at this on screen before, but another car, these detailed high-end exotics. Mini GT just does a tremendous job at the price point. A metal base that fits perfectly with the body. They tampo the metal bases now with the carbon fiber. T 
tire and rim perfect rolls perfect carbon fiber on the window sills carbon fiber treatment on the heat extractor on the engine compartment the headlights you can see the fine detail they just do the the thin peat metal just so well that's why it's always exciting to get these to finally see them in person the the pictures the pre-production photos the advertising photos they don't do these cars justice you they're always are better in person and you can then you look like on on the pictures that they publish they just always are better <laughs> Um, it's a funny thing. Sometimes it's the opposite. You know, the cars are worse in person. You know, most of the times they're actually better, uh, I'll tell you the truth. But this is like always better. I mean, because it's not just like the way the car looks and the casting, it's the way the paint lays on the car. You know, the fine detail of, you know, how they place things. There, there's never not too much things out of place. And then just the quality of the casting. The depth on the body panel line. It's look at it. I mean, you can see with your own eyes. So, just very very happy to have this car. The purple one is out now as well, and I think the purple one is very very nice. So we might get that as well. But the green had to come home. It's just gorgeous. Very limited production car. I only made a few hundred of them. A thousand or something or less than that they also had a few set aside to be roadsters but they were like most lamborghinis uh, exclusive ones they were usually um spoken for when they're announced and uh, already taken so at least i can have my miniature version hope you enjoyed the show today we looked at a lot of vehicles um thanks for hanging in there more to come. We're going to look at cars as they come into the collection. Hope everybody enjoyed it. We love looking at cars. We love talking about them. And hopefully you find cars that you want to look at and talk about. If you like the show, look at the other videos while we're waiting for the next one. And a lot of information below here. So we'll type out all the vehicles we saw. Hopefully you like and subscribe. It helps the channel grow and helps me put out more cars for you to look at. And, uh, yeah, thank you for your new subscriptions, your your warm comments, and uh, nice questions that everybody asks. It's always nice to interact with the community. More to come. Till next time.